Hey guys, it's Avenger, welcome back to the channel. And today we're taking a look at the Fogwolf FW200 Condor, produced as Local Legend 19 by Anybuilds for Sobo and Microsoft. Now, this aircraft, of course, was designed originally as a four engine all metal uh, monoplane, originally designed as a long range airliner. The Japanese request for long range maritime patrol aircraft led to military variants, uh, which saw the addition of the lower hull uh, fuselage gondola, which included extra gun positions down there and observation positions. But essentially it saw success as a commerce raider until the 41-ish period when coastal command aircraft and hurricane uh, cam aircraft could really see them off. But it saw work, of course, as long as transport, as a patrol bomber, anti-shipping. So it did quite a lot of work. Now, total 279 were built between 1937 and 44. They did see, of course, civilian flight service as airliners, which was their original purpose. Now, in terms of that, we'll take a quick look at the specifications. Now, she could carry 30 troops in that configuration. I don't exactly have exact details on it carrying passengers, but not many, as many as that. Now, it had four Brahmo 323R nine-cylinder radials, which produced 1,000 horsepower apiece. She had a max speed of... 210 knots, cruising at 181, range of 30, sorry, 1,900 nautical miles, 3,600 kilometers, 14 hour endurance, so perfect for maritime service. And she could fly at service ceiling of 6,000 meters with oxygen. But as a civilian airliner, she was designed to fly at about 9,000 feet, 3,000 meters. So just below oxygen necessity, but higher than most other airliners. So, like I said, this is made by Innie Builds for Sobo. And They've done a reasonably good job, actually. Now, we never had a really good one. And of course, this is when the camera decides it wants to misbehave itself. We never had a really a good condor before. So it's an opportunity for an aircraft we've really not seen in the sim. And it does fit into a niche of that interwar era of airliners. It's up there with the Boeing 307 at the moment. DC-3 and the Commando. If you want to fly something like this, you've also got the Junkers 52. Now, very interesting landing gear there, of course. That kind of forward arching style. Which folds up into the engine nacelles there, forward. Very high nose, in fact, compared to a lot of aircraft. Well-designed textures and engines here from any builds they've definitely done well on their 3d models in the past and now and for once we see non-shiny tires which is an improvement honestly way too many aircraft we get with very, very shiny tires on them now what's cool here is the interior is fully realized in this aircraft so we'll do a quick count actually of seats we've got what one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 13, 14, 15, 16, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. About 26 passengers comfortably. Now what's fun is, back here we have doors that do open to allow us into a bathroom, which is neat. We could open these doors ourselves and close them. So we have an actual bathroom there. With loo roll, important, and a towel, and a cargo area in the back with flour, apparently, bleached flour product of Bavaria, October 1937, enriched, interesting, okay, cool, and what have we got down here, we've got, if I don't bump into it, um, Werkzeug, Casting toolbox, maybe or tool parts, handle with care, machine parts, probably. Meaning, they're with care handle. Hmm, not bad. All right, let's take a look into the cockpit here, shall we? Now, it's a big aircraft and it looks pretty complicated, but there's actually not a lot going on here. Very well detailed in terms of texturing and modelling. It's very airy and spacious in here, unlike a lot of aircraft at the time. 
And whilst we have got, of course, door back here to the passenger cabin, and we can never get all the way back in here in first person, so we can find a nice seat for ourselves if we want to. Flight information, flight documents. Uh, we have radios that do all work, so we have our ADF down here. We have our transponder, so we've got all our modern mod cons there if we want to use them in the actual original positions. But if you're feeling lazy, you want to do it the mod modern way. Down here, navcom, etc., etc., and tablet visibility. Very useful to have this. Flight and weather information. So having this tablet's really super useful, of course. So we can go through various start systems, imperial and metric numbers, and other various bits and bobs. So we'll leave this for now because we'll get things started up, but. We're going to go through our checklist and this we'll go through the whole checklist for this because it's a very complicated aircraft and there's a lot going on here so parking brake is on that's this big fella down here that is on battery switch is over there in case you're unfamiliar with this you'll see here the aus and ein um, rudimentarily see it as off and on so battery off and on battery on avionics master switch is on and that would be down here, so you'll have some that are back in this section of the aircraft. So there it looks bright, this one's a bit easier to see them. Generators is off, instruments are off as required, mags are all off as required. That is them set there. So if you're familiar with the JU 52, you'll recognize, and the 109, you'll recognize there's various features of German aircraft, including our starter down there, which is a universal starter for all of them, and you select between them here. And lighting intensity there, so I'll keep that covered for the time being. Various lighting is down there. Now you want to get rid of this. Boom, bang, gone. They'll need to be open eventually, so I'll just do that now while I'm here. Okay, so fuel selectors. These are the important parts to get right here, of course. Okay, so fuel select to tank one. So we'll just quickly select down here. So there's simply a click to go there. And that's to the other side. So we want to tank one. Set as it needs to be. Okay, enter fuel supply. Those are good. Set, 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 set. Lots of complicated. You can mess it. It has 13 fuel tanks. Mostly to balance the aircraft out, but it's like four, five in each wing. It's very complicated. Four in each wing, I think it's like ten in the body. It, it's very complicated. It's extremely complicated. But to an extent, we can forget a lot of this stuff, because most of it is just selecting the tanks and choosing which one we want to look at, and seeing from there which we're going to be filtering to. So we'll go down, check to our before start. So, as I said, main door closed. That is actuated by this lever here. And we can open the rear door on the fuselage. We can close that as well. Generators on. Strobes on, navs on, those are on. Sunder head temps. Well, no point checking them, they'll be cold currently. That's on. Flaps open, as we mentioned already. Fuel valves. These are these ones down here. One, two, three, and four. Those are fire bottles there. We'll make sure we have our mixtures and props set as they need to be. Engines are just going to be cracked slightly there. Yeah, we'll close the fuel fluctuation valves. So that should be them set to here. That should be nice and simple. tank pumps to go on stupid thing resetting its angle those are all set those are all set there if it's master off that is off there starting engines now here's where it gets interesting we're on max rpm ready we're on mixture full open so we'll set our mags to both on there 
and this will be the same for all four engines. And we'll select engine four, so four, open the starter cover, and pull the starter. And we'll get start on number four. And now I do like how these engines will settle down into rhythm, actually. It's quite nice in terms of the technical sheet once we're done on the outside. So essentially it's do the same now for the other three. We just did them all together in sequence. And they're running. Okay. So, let's make sure alternators are on, avionics are on, tank pumps are going to be going to off now. Avionics master's on. Da -da 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 okay, so we've got our various run-up checks, so that'll be set for 1500 RPM. Bring those up. Make sure everything is ready as it needs to be. The aircraft is very German. I think it's the best way to describe it. Everything has a specific function and it's set in a specific way, which is quite nice in that it does give you exact positioning of where everything is and what it does, which is nice and clean. It doesn't overcomplicate matters, but it does mean there's a lot in the way. Now, of course, these are our RPM gauges, and finding 1500, I believe, needs just to take it up to there. Yeah, bring that up there now. Sounds are decent, I will say, at least from what we're hearing so far. Okay, those are about 1500, just about. So keep your eyes on oil pressures, temperatures, manifold air pressures. Everything does look good so far. Landing taxi lights down there. Everything's sitting where it should be. No major drama, so we'll pull these back and we'll take herself out to the runway and we'll give her a good kick and see how she behaves herself. So everything that's necessary is done. Now, of course, if we go to our GPS page here, we have our usual systems, so we could, if we wanted to, put the 3D vision on. But we don't, because we're not total lunatics we can go to our moving map if we really want to or we can go back to this where we can actually see the various details and matters we want from the aircraft so we can see our current stuff here so we can use it in way of a vintage flight engineer if you will because it does give us of course the numbers if we were to read off these instru instruments it gives us of course our current behavior of the aircraft current flight details so it's useful to have this stuff it's not comprehensive but it's certainly not bad it's limited but it's at least more than we get with a lot of these um, famous fire aircraft we have a lot here and of course you do have to cycle between these tanks when you're operating the aircraft to get to what you would actually be using in the end so pay much attention to that and now we're 15 minutes on the ground I think it's time for us to get out of here don't you enough faffing around let's take this baby for a flight shall we So taxiing is certainly a curious experience. It's very nose high. And this is not the widest taxiway, I'll be honest. I have never flown this aircraft before. I've loaded in once before to check out start procedures. But I've never once actually flown it. So we'll learn together. So Maringen's military base they got the rest of cables for the Swiss F-18s and we'll be flying across the lakes there towards Interlaken it'll be a short little flight maybe 10 minutes we'll end up at Reichenbach on the far side okay I'm gonna advance all four engines here and see what she does now unlike the real aircraft which have had limited autopilot capability more like heading hold this one does offer us a full autopilot capability. Okay, nose is coming down. Tails up. 
Now her speed's good. Tail's very steady. And she peels off the runway very gently. No major concerns whatsoever. Now I want to bring this gear up here. Oh, it's already come up because I had my lever selected in the wrong position. Quite a wildly unusual landing gear there. It's very modern design for the era, in fact. It's a very nice aircraft, actually. Right, let's get back inside the cockpit here. Pull those flaps there. Let's make sure everything is behaving itself as it needs to be. Visibility is actually excellent from the front. In terms of an aircraft I might want to fly, tons of visibility from the cockpit. We have the concessions to modern kind of navigation, which is nice to have. Uh, we have a full functioning autopilot there. Like I say, we've got the radios down here or we can use the ones in the back. And we do have here nav mode, heading, altitude hold, vertical speed control, heading bug and autopilot controls there. So we can do all those various things. So if we wanted to set that, we're good. I mean, we're not going to because it's a five minute flight, but we could if we wanted to. And there's definitely something weird happening with the world over there. This is all since the Swiss, the, the Germany, Switzerland, Austria update, by the way. And it's done something deeply unpleasant to uh, the area of Interlaken here. There seems to be more terrain detail up there, but it seems weird down here. Not sure what they did. Some bits look better, some bits don't. See, most of it looked like that before. Now you've got this mess over here. Up towards Grindelwald, which is weird. A little derpy. There's some good spots, some bad spots. I think the data decided to poo itself. Which is unfortunate, because it's a very pretty area. I shall have to investigate. But this is into Larkin down below us. We'll be heading just over it into the valley. Just beyond, you can see right there. So really not far at all. And we'll set up for an approach into right and back. Very easy to fly. Very gentle. No major hiccups or bad behavior. So far, she's good. We'll see what she's like on landing. But takeoff was very easy. Tail came up and then the aircraft just lifted off the runway. Pull the power back here. She's accelerating quite quickly. Definitely going to be a good cruiser. 180 knots cruise. Up to about 9,000 feet cruising altitude. She will do very nicely for your European hops if you want to go for some period aviation. So I don't see this being a bad aircraft at all for that. And like I said, with the concessions to more modern aspects like we've got from the radios down here, the tablet functions, it's nice to have. even if you don't want or need it. See right now, 195 knots, 5,000 feet. It's burbling along, no problems whatsoever. And there's the former airfield at Interlaken and the Rego base. And the Jungfrau Park. And there's the beautiful mountains up there. So we're just heading to this valley ahead of us, so it'd be nice and easy. We'll pull the power back here. Interesting. There's definitely some things seem brighter on this other side, weirdly. Like it's a different season they got the data from. Although it's Larkin seems more detailed now. Yeah, there's definitely weirdness to the north here. I'm not sure I like it. It seems like they've got everything in shadow and it's just lost most of their data. I hate it when that happens with satellite imagery. Okay, so I'm going to bring the power back a lot here because she seems like she's quite slippery. So keep an eye on our airspeed, which is this one here. So I'm going to idle the power out. And now she starts to slow down. The drone of those engines kind of softening off. 
Now, there's only one reconstructed example of this left at Berlin Tempeldorf. And uh, I don't remember how to pronounce that one. So no flying examples really left. Which is such a shame for such an elegant aircraft. And she is elegant for the period of time. A very elegant design. Bring that gear down. Bring the flaps down. Big flap surfaces there. And there's our airport ahead of us. It's about 2,900 feet. This should be plenty, in theory, she says. Having really not thought this through. 3,000 feet should be fine. I know the taxiways here can't handle this aircraft, so <laughs> we'll just see what happens, and it'll be okay. But it's a good way to see how the aircraft's going to behave on an approach like this, where I need to be a bit more precise. But the ridge line ahead of us, we'll have to cross over and then drop down. Can we open the throttles now? Just to pull our nose up here, because the speed's dropping off. And it's a drop down to the runway. That side window is quite cool because not only can I see the inboard engine, it gives us a good view downwards towards whatever's below us. There's the runway. Drift a bit left here. Straighten up now. We should be fine. Of course, being a local legend, official release. $14 completely if you have no discount supplied or if you have the premium deluxe. About eight pounds or eight, nine dollars. Really, really cheap. Which is honestly a fantastic price for what you're getting here. Absolutely bargain price for what you're getting. Because I'd say this has as many features really as the 108 Typhoon that we got from any builds. And the Uncas from Sobo, of course. So some really cool examples to get. This might be a really short runway for this plane. <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun. Uh, let's see how this, this, this one goes, shall we? We're descending with the terrain right now towards this runway. This might be on the short side of things. More flaps. Keep some power, fairly reasonable. Nose pitch authority is pretty good still. Okay. Little power off. Referencing the end of the runway rather than the near end. So keep my eyes on the far end here. Okay, craning my neck like crazy. We should be grand. It's just a much flatter approach than I'd have liked. Power lines to our right. I'm having to come in fairly low for this one because I think I need every inch I can get. Okay, and... Little bumpy, but not the end of the world. Brakes are applied. And the big beast is coming to a stop, and there goes a train. Past us. Okay, not bad at all. Those big barn door flaps really helped. That was a really gentle approach for an aircraft this big, I will say. Two engines to turn us around. Oh, we'll get us taxiing over here. Yeah, when taxiing, this is a great little side reference window there. And for a touchdown, because you can see exactly how high you're over the ground. Because you won't be doing it over the nose. That's for sure. Speaking of which, I will not be using this taxiway here. Because this is dinky. Let's see if we fit on that. This is not an aircraft airport designed for this aircraft. Yeah. As you can see, <laughs> we're a little big for this spot. But I don't care. It's fine. 
We'll just take it off the runway so we're in a safe spot. We'll park on the grass. It's a 1930s airliner. The grass is just fine for it. It can handle it just perfectly. There we go. Yeah, see, we came in and we dropped in just over those trees in the buildings here on this approach. I think we came in just past the displaced threshold. Honestly, for the price, absolutely fantastic and worth it. It gives you the vintage feeling of flying in Europe in the interwar years. A very good looking aircraft. An elegant looking aircraft. Fast aircraft with mod cons and little nuances you'd like from something that's an add on in a modern simulator. And decent vibration sounds and appearances. See how much the whole fuselage is shaking from those engines winding down. I definitely like it. Well worth grabbing. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.